Welcome back to the Napoleonic Stacking Channel. I'm the Napoleonic Stacker, and in this video, we're going to talk about some things that your government would prefer that you didn't pay attention to. Stay tuned. First thing I just want to say, I appreciate all of your comments over the course of the last few weeks. I've actually taken a little bit of a break from YouTube to spend more time with family and to deal with other things in my life that's just kind of piled up. One of which, of course, has been work, which has been a real challenge lately. And I've had to put more time and energy into being successful at my job. And additionally, I've been spending more time with my daughter which has helped me to basically get through some of these tougher times that I personally have been facing over the course of the last three to four months. And I know a lot of you are feeling the, the same kinds of pressure. I also took a little step back to basically figure out what type of content you all like to see the most of and what you'd like to see down the road. So in this video, please put in the comment section what you enjoy from my videos and what you'd like to see me cover in a future video. Over the last few weeks, I've had some things weighing on me and some challenges that really affect everyone in the United States and the world. And these are some things I'm going to get to right now, starting with the CPI inflation report that came out this week that basically shows in March the inflation rate was 8.5%. Now, we know that they're using fudged numbers to be able to get that metric, and this metric has been heavily skewed downward to make it look better than it actually is. And we feel it at the gas pump. We feel it at the grocery store. The inflation numbers are getting just out of control. And what the Fed's basically doing with their, their fractional rate hikes that they're doing basically throughout this year it's not even going to make a dent in inflation because real inflation we know is somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 to 15 percent estimated. So basically the Fed would need to raise interest rates to 8, 9, 10 percent for it to even make a dent in the inflation that we're seeing today. And to make matters worse, the market doesn't trust the Fed to be as hawkish as they say they're going to be this year. Basically, they're anticipating that once the Fed gets somewhere in the neighborhood of 2%, 2.1%, the market's going to tank, just like it did in 2019, and they're immediately going to have to drop rates again and continue quantitative easing in order to keep the stock market where they perceivably want it to be. You can see evidence of this in the Treasury yield. Basically, the two-year Treasury yield and the 10-year just inverted where your 10-year is going to yield less than your two-year. And historically speaking, that should never happen. When it does, it's a good indicator of recession. People are anticipating harder times down the road. And if the Fed was going to be hawkish and stay true to their word, that 10-year Treasury yield should be higher. Effectively, it's kind of like Indiana Jones when they're in the mine on the mining cart and the cart starts to go so fast that even when they try to use the brake, it's not enough to stop the cart. And eventually the brake just snaps off. And that's basically the inflation snowball that we're getting ourselves into. And the little bit of braking that the Fed's applying to this isn't going to do much. And once they try to actually pull that brake, it's going to snap. I don't believe they're going to get over 2%. And eventually it's going to lead to a dollar crisis where they're going to have to introduce some type of new central bank digital currency. And what's possibly worse, 15% of the world's calories come from the nations that are in conflict today, along with a large percentage of the global supply of fertilizer. Nations are planting less or they're outright missing the planting season altogether this year. This is going to dramatically impact the world's ability to feed itself. I've heard the F word tossed around recently, and this is going to affect impoverished nations first, followed by United States, Europe, and, you know, first world countries. The United States has already begun exporting more food to Europe. 
because of the crisis in Europe right now, causing supply chain breakdowns and food breakdowns um, into France, Germany, and other European nations. And this is going to further strain the United States supply chain in order to provide food for Americans and continue to cause prices on foodstuffs to go up. China, throughout the crisis of the last two years, had been stocking up on food. Many Western countries were confused by China's hoarding, but today it makes sense. People overwhelmingly are buying more than they need today because they know that their purchasing power is greater today than it will be two weeks down the road. And if you can buy you know, a case full of peas for 50 cents a can today, why wait and pay 79 cents a can, you know, a month from now? And people are coming to the realization that they've got to get rid of their dollars as quick as possible because the longer they hold on to them, the less purchasing power they have. And that gets us back to precious metals. Metals through the last few weeks have been moving upwards slowly but surely. And Gold and silver are a great preserver of wealth historically. Additionally, make sure that you've got food. Make sure you've got medicine, supplies that you need, because honestly, we don't know what's going to happen down the road. Foreseeably, it could get a whole lot worse. Things could get better. But based on everything that I'm seeing, there are some dire times ahead for us. And everyone seems to be so distracted by Will Smith and Chris Rock and all of the other petty things that are going on in the world today and not focused on the bigger picture. And these are the things that the government wants you to be distracted by so that you'll be good sheep and not question what's happening. But we've got to take care of ourselves. We've got to be prepared. Hold tight to one another. Hold tight to your friends. Hold tight to your family. Look after each other. And let's be a community once again. With everything that's happened over the last two years, it's driven people apart. And with what's coming up this year and next year, I believe, we're going to really need to pull ourselves together and to rebuild those relationships because we're going to have to count on each other to get through this. And hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully the good times are here to stay and they're, they're never going away, but we're long overdue for a recession. And there's a lot of things going down in the world right now that has me concerned. But I sincerely hope that all of you are doing well and are having a fantastic 2022. Even with all the challenges that we have, there are opportunities for you to be successful and to thrive. And I sincerely hope that you are among those who are thriving. On that positive note, if you've stayed to the end of this video, I'm going to show you what I picked up last week. And this is a 1899 Philadelphia Morgan silver dollar, NGC graded AU50. This is definitely one of the harder dates and mint marks to get. And on the back here, you can see the eagle. And it's good original color on this coin. It's not been cleaned. And even though it's not got a, you know, any luster to it, like some of the, the bright, shiny Morgans. I really like these because you know that it's circulated. You know it was used for something in the past. And my, my imagination just runs wild when I think about how these coins were used and spent. And this is one that I definitely needed for my collection, and I'm certainly glad to have it. I picked it up at my local coin shop, WNC Coins, which is my go-to place now for anything numismatic. But what are your thoughts on Morgans? Do you like Morgan silver dollars? Let me know in the comments section below. And I just want to thank everyone so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like, share with your friends, and subscribe. And until next time, Napoleonic Stacker, signing out.